Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Welcome, thanks for joining in. Today I'm going to tie a PMD parachute. First talk a little bit about the bug itself, some of the materials that I use. The PMD or the Pale Morning Dawn is part of the crawler group of mayflies. So they're most prevalent in tailwaters, spring creeks, you can also find them on freestone rivers. However, you're going to have to fish lower in the river system where the gradient is not quite as steep or you're more into a depositional zone. What I mean by that is you start accumulating leaves and sticks and other things like that. And that's what these crawlers feed on. The PMDs typically mar uh, hatch June through July here in Montana. There's actually two different species. The first, the ephemerella enormous, is about a size 14. It starts hatching out first, and as that hatch starts to peter off, then the second species, in frequency, starts to hatch, and it's a size 16. So although it looks like a prolonged hatch from one species, you actually have to be prepared with two different sizes of flies, particularly a size 16 for the later hatch. The incidence of cripples and stillborns is extremely high in the PMDs. About 50% of them fail to emerge completely. So there are some other fly types that are very, very good to use during a PMD hatch. For example, something like this. This is an emerger, CDC wing, sparkle yarn tail. Another is a soft hackle that can be fished right underneath the surface like that. Another is a flashback, a bar flashback type of mayfly. So those are all useful flies to have in your arsenal during the hatch. Now what I'm going to tie today is the parachute PMD. I'm going to be using a different colored post here. This has a turkey biot for the body. Clink hammer style is also one that I like to tie. The clink hammer is tied identically. The difference is in the hook shape. The clink hammer fly is meant to sit in the, in the water with the body of the fly underneath. When the mayflies first emerge, come up to the top, they stick their thorax into the surface film, then they slowly bring their body up parallel with the water, and that's when the parachute PMD comes in handy. So there's a lot of different variations of flies that you can use during a PMD hatch. The PMDs are the western equivalent to the eastern sulfur mayflies. It's a fun, fun hatch to fish. Typically again mid-morning to mid-afternoon is when they hatch. All right, for my post, this is a post type that I use almost all my dry flies. I don't think I've ever shown you how I make it. This is just McFlylon, which is a polypropylene material. I cut one strand off. Use your bodkin to straighten out any kinks. You want to uh, use the amount of post material appropriate for the hook size. The thicker your post material is, the more difficult it is to tie in firmly. So don't overdo the post material. The post material is simply a visible point for you so that you can see the fly better. I'm going to be tying with the size 14 hook here. So I'm only going to take about a third of this post material. When I cut the strand off, I burn the end and I'll show you why. So I'm going to take off what I think I need for this, cut it near the burned end, and then I take a few strands of pearl crystal flash. You could use different colors if you wanted to, but it gives that post a little bit of glint, makes it a little bit easier to see when that light is kind of funky on the water. All I do is lay the crystal flash on top of the McFly lawn. Cut it even, once again burn that end, straighten out the tail end here, trim all those fibers even. And then I work off of the unburned end. I'll take a two inch piece of section for my post. The point for burning this is you don't lose fibers as you're working down. 
If you did not burn these ends, by the time you got down to the end, you'd probably have half as many fibers as you started with. So it's a good way to consolidate those fibers and keep them together. Now I'm going to be using a biot for the body. I like a biot body. The biots occur on the leading edge of the most outermost feather, wing feather on all birds. The biots are an interesting feather. They form the beginning of the airfoil. They're a very tough feather because they take a lot of abuse. We use, typically use biots from three different birds, ducks, geese, and turkey. You can see the difference in the length of these biots. I typically will use a turkey biot for something 14 and larger, a goose for 16s, and then the duck for the 20. The reason is, not only do you want the length so that you can complete the body of the fly, but you want to be able to get enough wraps to show that segmentation. So if I used a turkey biot on a size 20 hook, I wouldn't get but one wrap and the, and the abdomen would be done. So we want to make sure we have that segmentation. All righty, well, let's say we get started. I'm using orange Vivas 10 aught thread. The male PMDs have very large, very bright orange eyes, and that does show from underwater. So it's just something that I add a little bit of visibility there. Now I grabbed the wrong hook when I left home. So this is a 1X long. Typically I would use a standard dry fly, but this will work out just fine. Start the thread where your post is going to be, which is at about the two-thirds point on the hook shank, or 75%. This is an optical aid to show me that I cannot go forward of that until I am ready to tie in the post material. I use this with my students in the beginning fly tying class to help to teach them not to crowd the head. So we'll start this again at about the 75% point wrap a nice smooth taper use your tag end as a slide that'll help you to root to uh, wrap a smooth body all right cut that off allow that thread to flatten some it's easier to trap materials against the hook with a flattened thread for the tail i'm using cdl hackle this is our new substitute for spade hackle it's excellent material comes in several different colors i'm just going to grab a few barbs here. The tail should be equal to the hook shank in length. This, so you can see the base of the feather is a little webby. You don't want to use that part. We're going to be using the tips, which are very glossy and hard. Make excellent tailing material. Measure that about a hook shank in length. About a 45 degree angle here, make one soft wrap, make another wrap right in front of that and pull it up tight. That rolls those fibers on top of the hook shank. So we're using thread torque to our advantage. Wrap this forward until I'm almost where I tied in the thread initially. Trim that off. Now I'm going to wrap the thread to behind the hook eye and then back to where I want my post to start. So I have two layers of thread underneath that post material. So with my prepared material here, from the unburnt end, I'm just going to cut off a couple inches, just enough for me to be able to hold on to. Now when tying a parachute this way, it's critical that you have these first half a dozen thread wraps as tight as the thread will handle. I'm going to spin my thread to cord it up, strengthen it, get my material, my material about midway, pinch wrap, one wrap over it, make sure I have it on the hook shank where I want it, tighten it, second wrap right over the top of that, tighten that. Now I'm going to swing this wing just a little bit here and sneak a wrap in crosswise over the front wing, behind the rear wing. So now I have an X wrap. Pull these fibers out straight towards you hard. That allows those thread wraps to slide in against the hook shank, which is where you want them. You do not want this footprint of thread to be big. I'm going to take a second wrap, and now I have a pair of X wraps. I'm going to use another pair of X wraps to consolidate this. If you keep your material on top of the hook shank when you tie it in, 
you won't have wild fibers everywhere. All right? Now I'm going to combine these two wing halves into a single post. Shorten your thread up, bring both of these halves together. Everything on the wing post is done counterclockwise. All thread wraps, the hackle wraps, there's a reason for that which you'll see when we finish the fly off. Bring these two up, reach over, grab your bobbin. I'm going to make three tight thread wraps against the base of the post as close to the top of the hook shank as I can get. Come around, tighten the thread. Come around, tighten the thread. And then the last wrap, come around, tighten it, reestablish your regular direction by making one clockwise turn in front of it. If your post isn't pretty firm right now, it's never going to be firm. So if it's sloppy, take it off and do it again. A sloppy post is difficult to post, it's difficult to hackle. For the hackle, I'm going to be using a um, medium done saddle hackle. I've often seen, heard, read people suggest on a parachute fly that you use an overly large size hackle, which I think is ridiculous. Unlike a conventional fly where the hackle sits on its points like this, the parachute hackle uses the entire width of the hackle, which gives you much more support than you would with a conventional tie. I'm going to strip this off so that I have enough bare hackle stem to not only go from the base of the post to behind the eye, but up as far on the post as I'm going to hackle it. Having this bare stem and a little bit on the top makes for a clean tie-in. Okay, so when you tie this in, the shiny side, the concave side should be towards you for this to work. I lay this against the hook shank with the bare hackle stem right behind the eye. Capture this with a wrap of thread. Make sure that my hackle stem is not occluding the eye. Wrap forward over it to behind the eye and then wrap back. Now right before I get to the post, I'm going to stand this feather straight up alongside the post and make a couple of angled wraps, oblique wraps like this. This not only helps to pin that hackle against the post, but it turns it so that the inside of the feather, the concave, is against the post. And that's a requirement for this type of a parachute tie because when we hackle it, we're actually going to bend this hackle over so that the hackle points flare up. Now I'm going to post the post and the hackle at the same time. You can post your post with thread, come back down, tie in your hackle and repost it, but you're adding two more layers of thread on the post that you really don't need. Well, I turn this just a little bit so I can see it. Once again, counterclockwise. My thread is flattened. The smoother you wrap your post, the smoother the hackle will wrap. And I'm posting up tightly, just high enough so I can get about six wraps of hackle in. So see, nice smooth post at the top. I overlap that last wrap and I come right back down again with touching smooth wraps all the way down to the base of the post. Front of the post, make a standard wrap to reestablish your thread direction, okay? Now I'm going to be coming behind the post. I'm going to be using my thread to taper my mayfly body, typical carrot shape, small here, a little thicker at the thorax. You can use your thread just to taper that a little bit. We don't want it real bulky. And then I'm going to stop just shy of where I tied in the tail butts. Now I do like to pre-soak my, my biots. Feathers do dry out and you never know how long this biot has been on the distributor shelf, on the dealer shelf. So it's a good idea just to soak them first. They're more limber, they won't crack on you. Now when you take a biot off of the quill, whether you buy them pre-stripped or the quill, 
strip them off with tweezers. Do not cut them off. The reason is the biot has a keel, a hard edge on the leading edge. If you haven't worked with biots for a while, it may be hard to determine that. But the opposite edge, the soft edge, when you pull it off, will always have this little indentation right here. And this shows you that this is the soft edge. The keel edge is on the other side. Now, depending on how you tie in the biot, you can have a smooth body or you can have a ribbed body. If I wanted a ribbed body, like I tie in my calabatus, I would tie this in so that the keel faces the hook bend. That way, when I wrap it, that keel edge stands up and it gives me a nice ribbing effect. I want a smooth body on this fly, so I'm going to tie it in so that the keel faces the hook eye. Now, the biot has width. That's why I stopped short of the tail butts. I do not want to disturb those tails. The idea is to tie the biot in in a way that your first wrap, the rear edge of the biot, will just touch the butts of the tail without disturbing them. So if you tie in your biot here where it's thick, you need to move your thread forward. I'm going to tie it in near the tip. All I need to do with my thread flattened is just trap that tip on my side of the hook with a soft thread wrap. Bring it around one more time to tighten it. So that's what that tie-in looks like. Then maintaining that nice taper, I'm going to move my thread forward to the back of the post. Now you can use some extra small wire to reinforce this biot. I prefer just to add a little bit of very thin head cement to the thread body before I wrap it. And I've never had one of these biot body flies come apart. Now be careful when you start wrapping because you remember you're at the very tip of the top of the biot, which is pretty tender. To make sure that you wrap it in the correct direction, you're actually going to fold the biot over itself. I pull it towards the tail, pull it straight away from me so that I know the biot is nice and flat. Make that first turn so that the rear edge of the biot is right against the tail butts but doesn't disturb it. Now you'll see how that leading edge, that keel, would stand up and give me a ribbed body. I don't want that on this fly, so I'm going to slightly overlap these wraps to cover that keel and to give me a nice tapered abdomen. You want to tie it right up to the face of the post. Take one thread wrap, fold it over the hook shank, second thread wrap to secure it. And then cut this off close. And then I make one more thread wrap back just to make sure I have everything secured. Now there are lots of different dubbings that you can use just for the thorax area. I typically would use UV2 dry fly dubbing. This is a new dubbing that we've gotten in from Nature Spirit. Snowshoe rabbit foot dubbing. I like the texture, I like the color, plus snowshoe rabbit has its own flotation qualities, so it helps to float this fly. And we're not going to need very much. Always dub thin. You have control over thread and dubbing if it's dubbed thin. If it's fat and lumpy, then you're going to be wrapping fat and lumpy thread. Okay, I'll start off with just a couple of inches here, dubbed pretty fine. And I'm just going to build a thorax around the base of the post. Simply make a wrap or two behind it and X wrap around the base of the post. We don't need to go nuts with this, just add a little bit of body to it on a mayfly. The thorax is the largest section of the fly. It contains all the muscles for the wings and the legs. One more wrap behind. Now, once I come in front of the post, before I wrap the hackle, you want about an inch and a half of dubbed thread, finely dubbed. 
Not only will this help to lift up the hackle when I tie it off, but it will allow me to finish the head of this fly without having to add more dubbing. Now we're going to take the hackle, take it away from the post, make sure that none of the post material is in that hackle. And now I've bent it over so that the actual hackle barbs are facing up. Imagine an upside down umbrella. I'm going to start right at the top of the post where I tied it off and make wraps one directly under the next. Five wraps is adequate. Six is probably more than enough. So now I'm holding the hackle. I've wrapped it around the post. I'm holding the hackle towards me and down. Now I'm going to pin it against the post with the thread. Simply bring your thread straight up, bring it around the base of the post. Now as I wrap it, you'll see how this dubbing helps to lift those hackle points up a little bit. Two wraps, my third wrap, then I reestablish my regular direction, come in front of the post, and make a couple of wraps towards the head. And if I've put enough dubbing on, I was able to finish the head at the same time. Do not cut your hackle off yet. If for some reason you muff the whip finish, and things start to come unwrapped, you can still recover. Now the advantage of this is not only is the hackle being tied down, same direction as the thread, so the thread is tightening as I tie it down, but with the hackle points up, when I whip finish, and just whip finish slowly, you'll see those hackle barbs kick up and out of the way. They do not trap themselves. If these hackle points were pointed down, you would be fighting those trapped hackles with every wrap. Standard three wrap whip finish, cut the thread. Now I can come in with my scissors barely open, cut the rest of the hackle off. I like to trim my post the same length above the hackle, so my hackled post and my bare post are about the same height. If your post is too tall, it can overbalance the fly. The reason it's called a parachute flies because of the way it lands, and 99% of the time it lands in the correct way. But if you have too tall a post, it'll keel over. And then finally, I use the same very thin head cement and just put a little drop at the top of the post. The head cement will not stick to the hackle, so don't worry about messing with it. So there you have it, a parachute PMD. The hatch will be starting very soon now if it's not already underway, so tie up and get prepared. Thanks for joining in. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us. See you next time.